What is going on guys? Welcome to Greggles TV Daily Rewind is where we go back a week and give you the past seven days of tech news videos in one single video. And we covered a lot of interesting cool stuff this week from the Galaxy Z Fold 5. We talked about the new tri-folding phone that's going to come out this year from Samsung. We talk about some how-to stuff that you probably didn't know that's really easy to use and really easy to do in general and so much more. So enjoy this week and we'll see you in the next one. Our story of the day, let me find my beast of a phone, is about the moon photos that you can capture with your Samsung Galaxy phones. Now, not all Samsung Galaxy phones can capture moon photos. It's really the ones that have at least 30X and higher zoom, such as the Z Fold 4, the Galaxy S23 Ultra. There's a lot of phones that can capture moon photos at this point, especially on the higher end of Samsung's product line. And there's been controversy for the probably last week or two about moon photos that the phone can capture and how they are fake. There was a Reddit post that was put out there and has over 14,000 likes saying that Samsung Samsung's Space Zoom Moon photo shots are fake. And here is the proof and it goes into detail of why, why and how they're fake and, and, and how Samsung manufactures these images. And I'll be honest with you, I haven't really, haven't followed the story all that much, nor do I personally care. I, because it, I find it, first of all, kind of cool that it can capture a moonshot. And when it does capture a moonshot, I know it's doing something um, uh, magical. And when I say magical, I mean artificial intelligence, um, computerized something to do with the photo. Because, I mean, let's be honest, it's not like this lens is ultimately super huge. And when you go 100x, it's really kind of just like doing something behind the scenes in terms of the technology uh, and the software that's doing it. And I understand that, and I, but I still think it's cool stuff and it doesn't bother me all that much if it's, if it was faked or it was manufactured a little bit, but Samsung has officially come out with a official statement on these quote unquote fake space zoom moon photo shots. And here is their response. And I guess this article was translated a while back from uh, a Korean article, but it's added a little bit more information in, in terms of going direct to the source with the moon photo shot controversy. Uh, ultimately, you can see from here that it says how Samsung Galaxy cameras combine super resolution technologies with AI technology, AI is artificial intelligence, to produce high quality images of the moon. And the first thing I wanna point out is that they, where they say, when you're taking a photo of the moon, your Galaxy device's camera system will harness this deep learning based AI technology, as well as multi-frame processing in order to further enhance details. Read on to learn more about the multiple steps, processes and technologies to go into delivering high quality images of the moon. And they next show that if you wanna turn off this feature so that it doesn't capture any AI. They say, if you wish to take a picture without the support of AI, users can easily deactivate scene optimizer by heading to camera, camera settings, scene optimizer, and then off. Um, they also show a photo of an example of what they talk about in the moon, where they say the first shot's a moon shot deliberately edited to be blurry. The next one is with scene optimizer off, which you can tell it's kind of blurry. And then with scene optimizer on, you're seeing the same image. It's just cleared up a bit. The next piece of information that goes in says that AI based detailed enhancement to capture on the moon. When the moon recognized by the galaxy device is an appropriate brightness level, the user can press the capture button, follow the camera steps to deliver a bright and clear image of the moon. First scene optimizer confirms whether to apply the detailed enhancement engine through AI processing. You can see the learning data, go to the scene optimizer, is this a moon or not? Operation of scene optimizer. Next, the camera takes multiple pictures and then synthesizes them into a single bright image with reduced noise. After multi-frame processing has taken place, Galaxy camera further harnesses scene optimizers deep learning based AI detail enhancement engine to effectively eliminate remaining noise and enhance the image details even further. So basically what happens is when you're taking those moon photos with your Galaxy phone, it's taking multiple, multiple images behind the scenes, it's combining them all together, and then it's using artificial intelligence to clear up the image. So it you could say it's real and it's a little bit enhanced in terms of 
in computer technology. And you're gonna see in, 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 the, la in the next you know, years, couple of years, one year, five years, 10 years and beyond, artificial intelligence is gonna completely take over almost every process that we do. And this taking over images is cool. I think it's great to be able to clear up an image that is blurry. You see it with what Pixel does, Pixel's taking images and they can blur things out. They can remove things in the background, just like Samsung can remove things in the background. There's rumors that Pixel's gonna be having a, a video unblur. Again, that's artificial intelligence. That's using information that they know and they're producing, reproducing the image and making it clearer for it. And like I said a second ago with artificial intelligence, this is gonna completely take over our lives. And I, I can totally see a day where it's gonna learn how I video edit and it's gonna be able to edit my videos for me. I won't have to hire anybody. Or I can, I can you know, input my video into this AI video editor and it will edit it in a completely different manner than me, but a really cool way. And I don't have to learn that thing anymore. Or, you know, you have, um, uh, maybe you're talking to a psychologist. Maybe you don't need a psychologist anymore. You can talk to literally a robot. It has all the information it needs to guide you to the next step of your life and get past that problem that you're having. There's a million things that artificial intelligence is going to do that's going to completely enhance and change our lives and get rid of mundane tasks that we either don't wanna learn, can't learn, can't figure out, and just want to improve our lives overall. It's gonna be amazing and it can also be scary in a way. It's gonna eliminate a lot of jobs, but it's also gonna create a lot of jobs that are higher end for people to keep making AI grow and grow and grow. So there's good things and bad things just like anything in life. Some really healthy foods, but then there's bad foods. Like there's good and bad to everything, let's be honest. Um, so the way I look at it, I think it's great. I think it's cool. If it is manipulating the image a little bit to make it look better, I don't care. People are still blown away. I'm blown away. I think it's awesome. What you I only have one, it's not even a story, it's a tip and trick for you because the news was just so slow today. It really wasn't that much interesting stuff. And I wanted to just go through this. I think it's a really, really cool trick. And it's all about on, and it also work on any Android phone, but I'll just talk about Samsung Galaxy phones and the direct path that you go to. This will help you block ads in basically any app so that you don't have to deal with the ads in the app or on the website or any of that stuff. So this is a pretty cool little thing. So what you wanna do is hit your home buttons here on your home screen, swipe down from the top, hit the gear in the top right so that it brings you into settings. Once you're in settings, go into connections, go down until you see your more connection settings, tap that, then go into private DNS. When you tap that, you're gonna see automatic. It's gonna be set to automatic most likely or off. Click on private DNS provider host name and type in that dns.adguard.com. Now, before I do that, I'm gonna to set to automatic. I'll hit save just so you see it. And you would hit save there, but ultimately, just to show you that it works, I'm gonna bring up a website. I got Droid Life's website. Let me just refresh the page. And we have an ad right there for Vons and, and Wired. And I'm going to close that site. I'm gonna go back into settings go into private DNS, choose my private DNS provider host name, which is dns.adguard.com, which is, this is completely free, you don't have to pay anything. Hit save, hit the home button, and open back up the website. I'm back at Droid Life. I'm gonna refresh the page. We're gonna go back, and now, there, the, where there was an ad, it's gone. There's still the space there, but the ad is gone on there, so you won't see the ads. Now, I wouldn't recommend using this if you're trying to support a site that you love seeing their ads or you wanna support the site to get the ads. So keep the ads on if you want. I would use this if it was really intrusive, it was bo bo bothering you a lot because of the ad, um, whatever that reason may be. But yeah, this is a, a quick little tip and trick uh, to uh, not see ads as much basically on the website or whatever you know thing that you're using. So there you guys go, very quick and easy tip and trick for you. And if you wanna set it back, if you're having any issues, I noticed it within like my banking apps, my banking apps wouldn't load so good when I had this DNS thing on. So you might want to, if you're having trouble with a, a website that you're loading up or an app not working completely easy, just go back into that connections and then go into your more connection settings, private DNS, change it back to automatic, hit save, and then close out the app, reopen it, and you should be good to go. And it is another look 
at the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5. We've seen looks and renders of this before, but this is a brand new one. And this might even be a little bit more detailed than what we've seen before. Now, does it mean it's changed all that much? No but it's still a good look at this phone and what it's going to look like. So here we go. This is coming from uh, Super Rotor, who is a YouTuber. I'll link his video down below if you wanna watch it. It is in another language, um, so you're gonna probably have trouble following along, but you could watch him talk and watch the videos. But here's what it looks like so far. So here's the first look, which is just laying flat down. You can see the cameras popping out. You can see the ring around the cameras, which matches what you would see on something like a Galaxy S23 Ultra, for instance, and how they did that with that. Remember, the cameras on this are 50 megapixel cameras, so nothing too exciting in terms of the camera department or what we're gonna see in terms of megapixels. It's not matching last year's Ultra Phone or this year's Ultra Phone, not even close. You'll also notice that it is you know, lay down flat. And, and just like this year's, it kind of looks flat as well. You know, no, no big changes really for the most part. Um, next, you'll see what it looks like standing up with an S Pen leaning against it. Um, new chair drop design, which you can't really tell too much. Um, but the next one after that is gonna show you it completely closed up. And this is where you can see that it closes pretty flat. Um, it, with, because of that teardrop design, instead of having a little bit of an indent like the Fold 4 has, this will close completely flat because of that new hinge. And also, on the screen itself, we should see less indentation on that display so that it'll look a little bit clearer in terms of, you know, you seeing uh, anything go down the middle of it, which I guess is a good thing for a lot of people's eyes. And then the last one kind of just shows it in a different mode, you know, in a triangle shape uh, up and you can again see how skinny it is. You can see the cameras, you can see the colors and it doesn't look like a bad phone by any means. It is a nice looking phone, but it's not so different that if I probably just showed people these renders and I didn't say Galaxy Z Fold 5 or 4 and I just posted them, I don't think anyone would run out and say, whoa, that's a brand new Z Fold phone. I know that is, I can tell. You can't tell unless someone points out a couple things, such as the rings around the camera and potentially pushing, uh, showing that, you know, the, I don't know if you can see that, that this is completely flat now. Other than that, just physically, there's really not a lot of difference. It's very difficult to tell in the grand scheme of things. I, as you can see, am not in my office. I'm actually at uh, Great Wolf in California, and then we're headed over to Disney later today, so we had a little two-day trip. Um, but today's news has to do with the Galaxy Z Fold 5 and the thickness of it compared to a couple of different phones. So let's just dive right into that. So I have a little um, tweet that I copied here. Um, it's funny because Ice Universe tweeted it and then deleted it, and now I have... At least I have the information. So without further ado, let's just talk about it. So you can see his tweet says, Huawei Mate X3 is the king of the foldable mobile phones today, far exceeding Fold 4 and beyond the Fold 5. The folding thickness is 11.21 millimeters and the Fold 5 is 13.4 millimeters. The unfolding thickness is 5.3 millimeters and the Fold 5 is 6.1 millimeters. The key point is that it supports IP68. The other thing I want to throw in is that Again, the, the Fold 5, when it's unfolded, is 6.1 millimeters thin, and the Fold 4 is 6.3 millimeters. So the Fold 5 is thinner by a little bit versus the Fold 4, 0.2 millimeters, but it's definitely not the thinnest, slimmest folding phone. That still goes to the Huawei uh, Fold, the Huawei Mate X3 phone. Now, a couple things to remember is the Huawei phone is basically only available in China, I believe, and... We don't live in China. Most of my audience doesn't live in China. So it's really not, it's kind of a mute, a mute, mute point when you talk about that because it's like, you can't buy it anyway. So what does it matter? And plus it doesn't have water resistance. And then let's be honest too, the software on Samsung is pretty awesome and pretty mature and pretty stable at this point. So it's like, what's more important? Like a really slim, awesome looking phone that you can't use really anywhere or a phone that has great software is available basically everywhere and works fantastic. Like obviously the latter is, it might not be the, the prettiest, the best, but software plays a major part with that. So like as much as we put, or even me and myself, I see you guys do it too, but I know I do it as much as I am disappointed with how Samsung is going with their foldable phones. And I want them to have more competition, especially in the West. 
it's still hard for them to not lose that spot of being number one basically around the world in terms of foldable sales or close to being number one because of their software, because of their ecosystem, because of everything they've done thus far. The hardware will get there when they get pushed more, especially when Pixel comes out with their folding phone. You gotta imagine OnePlus is gonna come out with one. There's gonna be tons more folding phones and way more competition in the West for these companies, for Samsung to really have to end up pushing the envelope, probably coming out with a pro version, probably thinning out and making things better, bigger batteries, better cameras, faster charging, all that stuff. It will come in due time. It's just unfortunately going at a snail's pace at this point. It's like, it feels stagnant. That's really the best way to describe the Fold 5 and 4 and 3 is they're stagnant. They haven't done much. It's basically the same phone for the last three or four years. And it's a juicy one, guys. The juice is about to burst on this one because I think a lot of people are gonna be, maybe not a lot of people are gonna be interested in this one, but they're gonna be intrigued for sure. And it's a brand new device coming from Samsung that is due to maybe be released in 2023. And we've also got some information on a phone that doesn't look like it's coming out anymore from Samsung. So here we go. Here's the tweet from Yogesh Brar saying that there is no S23 fan edition in development chain, unlike what we've been hearing in recent rumors pointing to it. He continues to say Samsung is instead working on the improved Z Fold 5 and Flip 5, along with a tri-fold phone or tablet that might finally ship this year year this is huge news guys and why is it huge because we haven't had a tri-fold phone from samsung or tablet whatever it ends up being as of yet i am been racking my mind since i've seen this story is it going to be a phone is it going to be a tablet i have i honestly don't know i I'm, i feel like i'm leaning more towards it being probably a tablet because i think the functionality of something that folds three times you know buh, 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 is more conducive to a tablet experience i'll be happily wrong though if it's a, a phone in general with that um it's gonna be a, a, a even more niche type of product i don't think a lot of people are probably gonna end up buying that one like you, you talk about not even a lot of people buying the fold and the flip i mean there's millions of people that buy these phones overall but like in general versus their candy bar counterparts a lot of people don't buy them. And so there's a huge, massive growth that can potentially happen with the folding and the flipping phones. And a tri-fold phone, I feel like it's even more of a niche product versus just a potential, or where is it? Here's my folding phone. A folding phone like that. So it's kind of interesting what they'll end up doing with it, how they'll market it, how it will be different maybe in software versus a traditional folding, single folding phone like the Galaxy Z Fold 4 or not. The other takeaways from that are the S23 Fan Edition not being released. So you have to, if you're looking forward to that, potentially, at least from what this person saying, looks like it's not going to be uh, released. And then also we've no, heard about the Z Flip 5 and Fold 5 potentially being very moderate upgrades. At least the Fold 5 is. Flip 5 a little bit more so being a, a slightly more exciting upgrade. Our first story of the day has to do with the OnePlus Fold phone, a phone that should be out later this year and give Samsung and Google some competition in the folding market, at least here in the good old US of A. And some more information has come out about this phone. Tweet comes from Anthony the Galax saying that the OnePlus Fold will apparently have a periscope telephoto camera and a 4,800 milliamp battery. So when you get that phone, it's probably gonna look a little bit more so like a Galaxy Z Fold 4 uh, that versus a, a, a Pixel Fold phone. And then the camera, I, you know, I wouldn't say OnePlus hasn't improved on camera, camera taking abilities, they have, but in terms of them being one of the better ones, uh, that's still up for debate. But, you know, if you're gonna throw in a, a really nice telephoto uh, periscope, ca periscope camera on there, I'm all for it. Now, we've been talking about the Galaxy Z Fold 5 and Flip 5 a lot over the last couple to few weeks, and it seems like the Galaxy Z Flip 5 is the one that's gonna change a lot more physically than the Z Fold 5. But, you know, as we know, the, there's gonna be a display, and it's gonna be a bigger display on the back of the phone than previous generations of the Flip, and the Flip 5, it looks big, 
but there's something that potentially is gonna make it look a little bit awkward. Now, this information is coming off of a tweet and a video, if you wanna to go to the video, um, from uh, Super Rotor, and these renders that he shows off if you look at these Galaxy Z Flip 5s pretty close, you can see that the display on the back near the cameras is not a perfect square. It actually kind of indents just below the camera. Now, I'm assuming they do that because they have to do that, not because they really are dying to make it look not completely symmetrical. Um, it looks like a folder. If you think about the way a folder looks, like a physical folder, it's got that indent on there. That's the way this looks, kind of weird. It doesn't look awful. I mean, I would definitely want it to be a perfect square, but what do you guys think about that? Do you like the way that looks or not? I don't know if I'm a huge fan about it. It's kind of awkward looking, and but it's kind of not. I can see it both ways, but. You will need One UI 5.1 in order to see this, but if you do, what you're gonna do, and this is gonna be able to basically remaster your photos with the click of a button, it's that simple. So what you're gonna do is open up your Samsung Gallery app. Once you have that open, what you're gonna do is at the very bottom, you're gonna see the menu button. So it's gonna be like those three or four lines at the bottom, tap that. When you tap that, you're gonna then see suggestions. Now again, you need One UI 5.1, so if you don't, you probably won't see this. Tap that, it brings you into some photos that will allow you to do certain things such as you can remaster, it's basically fixing up your photos. You can remaster your photos, you can see it enhances the look of dark, blurry, and low quality pictures. You have add portrait effects, you can add portrait effect to different photos that it finds. You can auto edit some videos showing off the best parts of your video with pre-made clips and you can clean out, you can delete duplicate photos that are showing up in your gallery app to save space. So let's go into remaster pictures first. And once you go in there, it actually shows different categories such as brighten and reduce blur. I can upscale something so it looks better. So for instance, if I brighten and reduce blur, you can see I get before and after and you can drag this little bar, this is what it's gonna look like after. This is what it looked like before and you can see it side by side. I actually like the way it looks before, even though it's darker, it's still like a better, I don't know, fuller, deeper, rich color looking photo to me, if I would keep it the way it is. But if you wanted to see what it's gonna look like brightened up, then you can see it. And you can even hit save at the bottom and it will save it to your gallery app with that new enhanced look. Next, let's go into portrait effect. And I chose a picture of my son and it automatically starts changing that effect and you can Increase it or decrease it. You can see what it does. So if you always want, say you took a photo, you're like, damn it, I wish I added that portrait effect. Hopefully it'll show up in here and you can just go in there and add that portrait effect automatically with the suggestions. When you're done, all you do is hit apply and it'll basically spin out and then it will save it to your photos in your camera. Auto edit, there's things that will you know do a speed up mix or it'll do highlights of your video. So let's try the highlights first. So I choose that, I'm gonna hit play. Takes out my, takes out my, um, my, my voice and it, let's be honest, it's highlighting it but not really. I mean, it's a four minute video but they're cutting it down to about 20 something seconds, which if you can't hear it, that kind of negates it. So it's, I guess it's not that great because I'd want to hear me talking but if you didn't care about your talking then and it adds some music for you, then that's cool as well. You can also do these speed mixes which it does a really quick, thing and cuts it all up. It's a, again, it's like a, I think it's a, no, it's not a five minute video, it's a couple minute video, but it speeds it up for you and makes it, look, gets a little bit cooler. So there you guys go. That is your suggested remastered photo thing going on in your gallery app if you have One UI 5.1. Ch take a look in there. Maybe there's some stuff that you like in there. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and we'll see you down the road. Peace.